Welcome to GDP Gudo's CNC Tooling Guide. Over the course of this presentation, we will highlight the most important information on the slides. Occasionally, there will be additional information that we will direct you to. This presentation can be viewed all at once, or you can view specific topics based on the directory above this video. This tooling guide has been put together to help both newcomers and even the more experienced to the CNC machining industry. The purpose is to assist with the selection of cutting tools and clamping systems. The ability to maximize tool life and achieve best possible surface finish is a prerequisite to obtaining the highest return on investment made in a CNC machine. Its efficiency and productivity is only as good as the tooling paired with it. So understanding the most critical aspects of both tooling and accessories is essential. Beginning with design, construction, engineering expertise, to the balancing and inspection of the finished product, the selection of tool and clamping system made can have a profound impact on performance and production cost and can even have a greater impact on your bottom line. With the many options and suppliers to choose from, it does require a bit of homework to make the right tooling decisions. Surprisingly, cutting tools are often the last thing thought about when buying a CNC machine. But consider this, without the cutting tool, your machine won't produce a single thing. Cutting tool performance, tool life, and surface finish are the result of a synergy between all tooling and machining parameters. To achieve the best performance, all facets need to be right. A high-performance automobile requires high-quality, precision-balanced tires to run smooth. That same type of thinking can be applied to cutting tools and the tool holders used on a CNC machine. Good tires provide a smooth and safe ride and likewise, High quality precision balance tooling is needed to deliver the promise of productivity that comes with a CNC machine. This presentation will familiarize the CNC novice with the variety of tooling solutions that are available to meet specific cutting, profiling, drilling, grooving, and sawing tasks. Furthermore, proper tool selection, material hold down, and dust extraction will increase the frequency of the following desirable CNC characteristics. Accuracy, repeatability, finish quality, waste reduction, and overall the bottom line tooling cost. The paragraph below has information on how having the correct chip load can increase tool life. And remember, too big of a chip load will decrease the finish, and too small of a chip load will decrease the life. Don't skimp on safety. The American National Standards Institute has not yet developed a comprehensive safety standard for industrial cutting tools. However, at GDP, we follow European safety standards. Europe has extensive safety and production standards to ensure that cutting tools are designed to the highest precision and adhere to the strictest safety regulations. Now, Let's talk about the tool holders and clamping systems. Whether your machining task requires a standard tool holder, a drill, saw blade, or cutter head arbor adapter, a precision interface between tool and machine is a must. Developed in Germany, the HSK tool holder is the most widely used collet chuck on CNC routers and machining centers in the wood composite industry. It provides the highest degree of accuracy for high-speed machining. A precision machined interface between spindle and tool, it is balanced to G2.5 spec for 25,000 RPM. It's important to purchase only the highest quality tool holders from reputable manufacturers. This can help protect the machine spindle from potential damage. This diagram provides a closer look at the inner workings of the HSK clamping system and how the tool holder is securely positioned inside the spindle. HSK tool holders are available in different executions. From the standard collet chuck to the higher tolerance hydro and heat shrink versions. 
which is best depends on the application. The standard collet chuck has an accuracy of 0 0.006 to 0 0.010 millimeter. The high precision collet chuck provides an accuracy of 0 0.003 millimeter, which is as good as its hydro and heat shrink counterpart. We'll talk a bit more about the differences in applications in a minute. Here are the differences in collet range and accuracy with the RDO, or SYOZ collet style which performs within tighter ranges than its ER style counterpart. Collets wear out. Over time, the spring steel loses elasticity due to wear and heat. Collets that are not replaced will eventually fail. Collets are inexpensive. Failure to replace them consistently will increase tool costs due to unnecessary vibration, tool chattering, and breakage. They can do considerable damage to a spindle. So, adhering to a collet maintenance schedule is preferable to costly repairs. A few tips. Clean collets and collet nuts when changing tools. Use proper torque. Investment in a torque wrench to tighten the collet nut is a prerequisite to extending tool life and reducing breakage. Pay attention to clamp tool correctly, as shown on this diagram. With proper tool setup, the collet should be filled to 80% with the tool shank. Shorter clamping will allow deflection. Replace collets every 500 machine hours for optimum tool life. Prevent costly spindle repairs. The accuracy of the collet nut is an important component of tool holder setup. A high precision collet nut will have a ball bearing at its base. This bearing not only prevents tool slippage, but provides higher clamping accuracy and can be used for both clockwise and counterclockwise running tools. For routine machining of wood and composite materials, the standard collet chuck style tool holder is an excellent choice. For the more discriminant user and critical machining applications, the option of a Preciso Precision Chuck, Hydro Chuck, or Heat Shrink Chuck is a good option. See below for pros and cons. A great option for use with a standard collet chuck is a cyclone dust nut, which can be especially useful if too much dust is remaining on the table when routing. More importantly, it's a safer and healthier work environment to reduce airborne exposure to dust particles. These photos of the same cut made with a regular collet nut on the left and the other with a cyclone dust nut on the right show its ability to reduce dust and channel it into the dust collector where it belongs. Our company offers a demo or test nut to try, so customers can confirm it will work in his or her application before buying. While it's a no-brainer for some, far too often newcomers to CNC tooling have trouble seating and removing the collet from the nut. So here's a quick demo. First, Click the collet into position by pressing on one side, then pushing down on the other side to lock it in. To release the collet, use the ball of your hand to push out sideways. Here are the steps for proper tool assembly. First, snap the collet into the collet nut or cyclone nut. Then, place the tool into the collet paying close attention to the proper tool depth in the collet. Tighten the collet nut manually onto the tool holder. Next, position and secure the tool holder in a tool setup fixture as shown below. Lastly, tighten the collet with a torque wrench to the correct torque for your collet style used. Incorrect torque when tightening the collet nut will result in poor cutting performance, premature collet wear, tool slippage during the cutting process, tool breakage, and chattering. Investment in a torque wrench will have paid for itself after the first few bits broken due to over torquing. Use the torque wrench only for tightening the collet nut. Use a standard wrench to remove it. Otherwise, the torque wrench can lose calibration accuracy. A setup fixture and torque wrench are a necessary investment to achieve optimum tool life. These are necessary to avoid tool breakage, inferior finish, premature wear, and a high tooling cost. 
After spending over six figures on a CNC machine, this is not the time to pinch pennies. Next, let's look at drill bits for CNC machining. Sometimes when using flat shank metric drill bits, the hole quality can be less than desirable. Adding a drill bit adapter can be used to help solve this issue. These three drill bit styles are the most common. For holes that will go all the way through the material, use V-point bits, or through hole bits, that prevent surface tear out on the bottom of the cut. For blind holes, a brad point or a dowel bit is required. It has a center point and outside spurs to cut a clean hole. For pilot holes, bits are available in solid carbide in an eighth inch diameter. For hinge pockets, the hinge boring bit is the best option. The center point and outside spurs provide a clean edge hole and prevent the bit from walking. When collets are not available, the universal drill adapter, shown on the right, is the best and only option when drilling many different cylindrical drill bit sizes, RPM and feed rate. When drilling or boring holes on a CNC machine, your spindle speed and feed rate must be adjusted to within the proper parameters for drilling or boring bits. The recommended RPM and feed rates are also shown on the right. Moving on to the topics of sizing, jointing, rebates, dado cuts, and grooving. The best options for CNC machining are either solid carbide bits or PCD bits. PCD tooling achieves the best return on investment when it is dedicated to cutting homogeneous material and not interchange between, for instance, composite or wood. This means use dedicated tools per material. The only time a carbide tip tool is an economical solution for use on a CNC is for cutting small profiled prototypes, otherwise known as one-off projects. Depending on product and volume being machined, the selection of the most suitable cutting tool requires a bit of homework if best performance and finish relative to investment is desired. In the following slides, we present the most common and cost-effective router bit options based on application. For straight cuts, such as sizing, joining, rebating, grooving, and dados, the options available are solid carbide, carbide insert, or PCD. For profile routing applications, Options are either carbide insert or PCD. For prototype or one-off needs, a corrugated head provides a cost-effective solution. In addition to the many standard tool designs, it is often necessary to customize a tool for a particular requirement in order to provide a more economical option over time. Many tool styles can effortlessly produce the same cut, so researching cost, time, and yield based on a tool choice can have a substantial impact on a tooling budget. Solid carbide router bits come in a variety of tool geometries, number of flutes, and edge grind. The styles range from O flutes, compression style, up or down cut, chip breakers, to ruffers, and more. Their applications are discussed next. The image on the slide below shows a solid carbide straight O flute. The flute shape is ground into what looks like a half circle. This particular geometry is used for cutting flexible plastics. The flute is straight and helps keep lightweight, flexible plastic from moving up or lifting on the router table during machining. This tool is most useful on materials such as polycarbonate, ABS, polystyrene, PVC, and other flexible plastics. The O-Flute upcut bit features the same O-Flute geometry needed for the efficient chip removal when routing plastic. It also has an upward shearing angle to bring the chips out of the cut and provide the cleanest possible edge finish. This tool is the preferred router bit for hard and rigid plastic materials, such as acrylics, nylons, plexiglass, and other rigid plastics. The upcut spiral bit is used when getting the chips out of the cut is critically important. These bits are also used when the material is laminated or coated on only one side while being machined face down. The tool geometry does present a risk that the top of the material being cut can chip or fray. This tool is a good choice for mortise and tenon cutting needs and also provides an excellent option for short runs on corian and phenolic. Upcuts provide the ability to feed faster than downcut bits because the chips are pulled out of the cut by the upward shearing action and keep the tool running colder. 
A ball nose tool is not only a great choice for cove and fluting operations, but it is the number one go-to tool when complex shapes have to be surfaced. A flat bottom bit would leave lines and a poor finish. However, a ball nose bit, due to its rounded shape, provides seamless passes. Another option for this tool is a carbide insert version, pictured below, which is always much more cost effective if the project is ongoing with continuous tooling needs. The downcut spiral bit provides a superb top surface finish, but it does run the risk, depending on the application, of pushing chips into the cut and bogging down the bit. However, with good dust extraction and proper chip load, this shouldn't be a problem. It is often selected for doing grooves, dados, and rebate cuts. One thing that is important to remember is always use the shortest possible cut length for dados, grooves, and rebates, as the longer tools will have more deflection and can break more easily or even provide poor surface finish due to deflection. If there is an ongoing dado or rebate cut requirement, an insert bit will decrease the cost considerably within a short period of time, that is if the tool is available in the diameter needed. The compression bit is designed to cut materials that have a coating of laminate, melamine, HPL, paint, paper, and other coatings on both top and bottom of the surface. The cutting flutes have opposite shear angle geometry and cut toward the center of the material. This provides a clean surface on both top and bottom of the panel. This is the most popular style bit used in composite panel processing. It is available in many different executions, ranging from a variety of carbide grades defined for wood, composite material, and melamine. Coated versions of this tool are also available. These bits come in multiple different carbide grades. You have to be sure you pick the right one for the job at hand. If you are using 3 quarter inch or larger compression bits, an insert or a PCD tool offer the lower cost option for any ongoing need. The compression chip breaker is the best choice for cutting plywood and OSB panels where good surface finish on both sides is expected. The chip breakers are the notches machined in an offset pattern into the flutes. These notches facilitate the breaking up of larger chips created by these materials, as well as a faster feed rate. While the chip breaker is essentially more of a hogging tool, it does provide excellent machining characteristics, as well as good finish in the compression style. Below is an insert tool option for high feed speed requirements on plywood panels and other composite materials. The upper down cut chip breaker is a great choice for cutting composite panels and plywood where a good surface finish on one side is needed. The insert option pictured below features a selection of insert knives that are either straight, upper down shear, or even compression style. The inserts can be arranged as needed on the tool body as shown below. This allows them to be positioned for the best possible finish. A roughing bit is designed to remove a lot of material quickly. But, as the name implies, it does leave a rough edge, which has to be cleaned up with the finishing pass using another tool. The typical feed rate for a three flute roughing bit is 800 inches per minute and up. A very cost effective option is an insert roughing tool, see the picture below, which is available with either carbide or diamond inserts. This provides a tremendous amount of cost saving for high volume operations. Whether diamond tooling should be a consideration for a particular application is discussed in the next few slides. Diamond router bits come in a variety of styles, such as high shear, single, two, or three flute disposable, and even single segment opposite shear, just to name a few. Diamond tools are not all equal. Some are designed to be disposable, others can be sharpened one or more times, and these should all be factors considered when shopping for PCD tooling. Here are some points worth remembering. Always adapt the cutting length of the router tool to the panel thickness. Always choose the stronger tool. This means pay attention to the cut length with respect to the diameter. Material hold down must fit the tool. That means select small diameter tools for parts that are prone to moving. Chip clearance is better on larger diameter tools. Therefore, when running high feed rates in thicker panels, use a diameter 5 eighths of an inch or greater. Be sure to select the highest accuracy clamping tools. If you are using collet chucks, be sure to replace your collets regularly. This is about every 500 machine hours. There is no debate that PCD will outperform solid carbide tooling in wood and composite material. P2 
PCT tooling will almost always be the more economical choice over time. Until recently, there was a good argument to stay away from diamond router bits. This was because most companies that were promoting them only offered single flute on diameters of half inch or less. This did not facilitate high feed rates. That has yet since changed with the introduction of a 3 8 of an inch and half inch PCD bits that are two flute. If you want to achieve the best possible tool life and save substantial amounts of money in the process, you would be remiss to not investigate the cost of running a diamond tool for your largest projects. Whether sizing or profiling, diamond tooling should always be used on homogeneous material of the same panel thickness to maximize the tool life and performance. Most diamond tools can be sharpened a few times and will last the longest when paired with a heat shrink tool holder for the highest accuracy. There are certain circumstances in which solid carbide bits would be the better choice over diamond tooling. This slide shows information that is imperative to consider when weighing tooling options. On this slide is a rather conservative cost comparison between a carbide compression bit and a two flute diamond router bit. As you can see, the diamond router bit is usually a fraction of the cost of the carbide bit. The next two pages contain information that is critically important to preventing tool breakage and maximizing tool life. It might be a good idea to print the next two frames for a quick reference when needed. Correct chip load is an important factor to extend tool life and to avoid premature tool wear. Chip load is the size of the chip the tool makes during the cutting cycle and is calculated based on the number of flutes on the tool, the spindle speed, and the feed progression. Please take the time to review carefully. When the chip is too small, the cutting action will generate more heat than desired in the cut. This will cause the cutting edges of the tool to deteriorate prematurely. A larger generated chip load within the reference range for a particular material will achieve the longest tool life. Finding the optimum chip load. This will allow you to maximize productivity and get the best tool life and lowest cost per panel. In order to do so, follow the steps below. Start using recommended chip load and slowly increase your feed rate until the finish quality becomes unacceptable. Then, slowly decrease the feed rate again until desired finish is restored. Make note of this feed rate. Next, decrease the machine's RPM until the finish deteriorates. Once that occurs, increase your RPMs again until the finish is once again restored. At this point, you have found the sweet spot. Moving on to some other common and useful CNC tooling solutions. The fly cutter, also referred to as the spoil board cutter on flat table machines, comes in diameters of 40, 80, and 100 millimeters. A clean and level spoil board is mandatory to having a good vacuum hold down, as well as maintaining machining accuracy. When setting up the machining program, the routing tool should extend beyond the workpiece and penetrate the spoil board by three to six tenths of a millimeter. Periodic resurfacing of the spoil board to maintain a flat, even surface is most efficiently performed with a large diameter fly cutter. Another option for higher quality surfacing needs is an insert tool with special insert knives. These knives have an edge radius that provides a superb surface finish. This is useful for applications such as MDF shaker style cabinet door cutouts. The ability to produce a square corner cutout in MDF doors is possible with a half inch and a sixteenth inch solid carbide bit. For optimum results, this tool should definitely be used on an HSK heat shrink tool holder. An economical solution for rebate or deeper surface planning cuts is to use insert tooling. These tools allow the use of replacement insert knives. This is ideal because when the tool is dull, replacements usually only cost around $6 per cycle. The solid carbide inserts are available in different carbide grades to facilitate efficient cuts in either wood or composites. If you need to perform deep pocket cuts, consider this. The further the cutting edge of a tool gets away from its clamping source, the more deflection is created. This means that there's a bigger risk of tool breakage. The general rule of thumb is that cut length should not exceed three times the cut diameter. 
This presents a challenge when cutting a deep mortise pocket, which is resolved by a special mortise bit. These bits have an alloy composition that prevents deflection and tool breakage, despite the depth of cut. V-folding and miter cutting needs are very common. If you require miter folds, insert V-groove bits are available as standards for 45, 60, and 90 degree included angle cuts. Other angles can be produced as custom tools. The insert knives are double-sided and provide two life cycles each. Insert V-groove bits are also a great solution for lettering, engraving, and decorative cuts, as well as beveling the inside edges of shaker doors and square corner cutouts. The following slides show some examples of tooling options available for specific materials. A solid carbide tool is often selected for most cutting challenges on a CNC machine. However, this is not always the most cost-effective solution. As you will see in the following frames, there are many options to choose from. Therefore, it is often recommended to look for the most economical option for the job at hand. Carbide insert tools or diamond tools offer a lower cost alternative in many cases. These options are often overlooked by short-sighted decisions based on initial cost, which can be quite deceptive. Looking at the image below, we have tooling options that are common if you are drilling, sizing, slotting, or trimming veneered composite panels and similar materials. If the same cut is to be repeated for drilling, slotting, grooving, and edge profiling phenolic and cement fiber board panels, then PCD tooling may be your best option. Examples are given in the slide below. The image below shows the recommended tooling options for those performing any drilling, high-speed edge finishing, or cutouts on plywood panels. The most appropriate tooling is shown below for those running solid wood applications, such as roughing, profiling, horizontal drilling, and boring. The tooling shown in the image below is recommended for cutouts, sizing, drilling, and boring lightweight honeycomb panels. It's useful to equip the tools shown below when applications include grooving, slotting, drilling, and surface contouring MDF, cement fiber, or gypsum panels. Below are the recommended tools for slotting, grooving, drilling, and edging fiberglass reinforced panels. Here's some options for tooling when it comes to drilling, slotting, and grooving veneer and other laminate coated particle boards. For machining applications such as rebating, slotting, and cutouts on foam core with laminate, we recommend the tools shown below. These examples show just a portion of some of the standard tools available that can machine unique material compositions efficiently. Now moving on to profile and custom tooling. Using carbide insert tooling is the most economical approach to profile and custom tooling for cabinets, interior and exterior doors, millwork production, and more on a CNC machine. The benefit, of course, is constant diameters, profile accuracy, and quick tool change. Larger profiles and tool assemblies are manufactured on Arbor adapters as sets with replaceable insert knives. These profiles and assemblies are designed to provide flexibility, such as the option to machine various door thicknesses or tongue width. Most CNC profile tooling is made to order. The process is very simple. A profile drawing or material sample is supplied in order to obtain a firm price quote. Once an order is placed, a dimension drawing is submitted for review and revision. Once the drawing is completed to satisfaction, a last approval is needed to proceed. Larger profile tools are usually made of an aluminum tool body. This is mounted on an HSK Arbor adapter in order to adhere to typical CNC machine spindle weight restrictions. A custom tooling detail that is worth mentioning. When shopping for insert tools, 
Be aware that some manufacturers have proprietary insert systems, which will restrict sourcing and can even limit competitive pricing. A corrugated knife adapter fitted with a heat shrink tool holder provides the flexibility and low cost needed for prototype production and one-off projects. This tool is designed to equip 40, 60, and 80 millimeter long corrugated knives. Similar cutters are seen in the market with an aluminum body, but we strongly suggest you stay clear of such cutters. The danger occurs because the aluminum corrugations in the head will eventually wear out, and the tool can become a real danger to operate. In millwork operations, Using a helical planing cutter to achieve excellent finish is ideal for large rebates, jointing, and trimming. Four-sided solid carbide insert knives that are equipped with special geometry deliver considerable savings. On the contrary, performing the same operation with a solid carbide tool with fixed cutting edges can be more costly. The cutter features excellent chip removal and very quiet running due to its helical design. This is the perfect solution for many millwork tasks, such as arch or window production. This cutter also features scoring insert knives on the bottom to clean cut corners in a rebate cut. Moving on to saw blade and groover adapters. There are several options for groover and saw blade adapters for CNC applications. These are determined by the diameter of the blade required. The shank style adapter, shown in the upper left, is designed for blades up to 200 millimeters in diameter. In the left corner is a design with saw collars. The saw collars provide blade stability for blades up to 400 millimeters in diameter. The assembly in the bottom right corner is for blades with diameters up to 350 millimeters and is available in several A dimension lengths. On the blade flange adapters, with the exception of the saw collar adapter, have countersunk holes in the blade body to provide a flush bottom with the countersunk screws that secure the blade to the respective adapter. The adapter shown on this slide is designed for blades up to 200 millimeters in diameter. An aggregate head provides five axis capabilities. The head is equipped with boring or sawing outputs that facilitate horizontal boring and vertical sawing or grooving. Aggregate heads can house single, double, and even four outputs on the same head. Torque arm connections are machine specific and must be verified at the time an aggregate head is ordered. GDP aggregate heads are manufactured in Germany and adhere to the highest standards of quality and accuracy. Tool setup fixtures are available in a variety of executions, from the very simple version of a tool holder setup to more expensive and elaborate tool presetters. Regardless of choice, accurate tool setup will save much time and material waste and will also ensure repetitive accuracy of the final product. A high precision spindle calibration test bar, pictured on the left, allows measurement of spindle accuracy. This is an important aspect of maintenance for CNC ownership. The calibration bar is indispensable to testing runout and alignment after an initial machine installation, relocation, or after an unexpected crash, or even using the calibration bar simply as a periodic performance test. Doing this will identify spindle issues long before they become bigger and more costly repair items. Spindle plugs, pictured below, serve to protect the spindle motor from dust intrusion when the machine is being moved. Dust intrusion can also occur when performing a saw or grooving operation or a horizontal drilling application. Preventing dust from getting into the spindle motor will ensure best maintenance practices and reduction of repair cost. In closing, we would like to share some of the telltale signs of improper tool use. These photos show some corrective measures that are needed in order to extend tool life. On the top photo, collet marks are visible on the tool shank. This is an indication that vibration is occurring during the cutting cycle. Vibration contributes to poor tool life and poor finish quality. In extreme cases, this can also cause the tool to break at its weakest point, which is right below the shank. Tool breakage is usually the result of one or a combination of 
a bad or a worn collet, poor quality tool holder or a collet nut, using incorrect torque, having vibration during the cutting cycle, clamping the tool too high on the shank, having too shallow of a cut in relation to the cutting length of the tool, and running the tool when it's dull. If you see a residue of heat, which is either black and burn material buildup or a blue discoloration of the carbide or the tool body itself, when this occurs, it is time to go over the machining parameters to obtain the correct chip load. This will require a manipulation of one or a combination of increasing your feed speed, reducing your RPM, or changing to a tool with less flutes. This photo shows too much heat generated during the cutting cycle, which impacts the tool life quite dramatically. When this pattern is seen on a used tool, the chip load is incorrect and the feed rate most likely needs to be increased, which will also increase the chip size. This can occur from slowing down too much in corners and depending on the application and feasibility could be corrected by programming to a loop as shown in the diagram below. Here are the most common possible causes of tool breakage and their respective corrective measures. We hope this presentation has shed some light on some of the tooling questions and challenges that you might encounter and that you can apply some of the information we have shared on your own CNC production. If we can be of assistance in any way, feel free to call us or email us. Our email is sales at gudo.com and our telephone number is 1-800-544-8436.